great show. Because still coming up, we have uh, some amazing guests. Uh, Conan, I'm, I'm sorry, I want to uh, interrupt you here for a second. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just a little bit worried about Joel again. Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, for those of you who don't know, Joel uh, is our announcer. You hear him every night at the uh, top of the show, and sometimes he gets a little depressed. Did you notice that tonight, Andy? Yeah, he seems to be in one of his bunks, you know. You know, we should check in on him, just okay. to make sure. Liz, uh, could you patch us through to Joel's voiceover booth, please? Sure, Conan. Uh, Joel? It's Conan O'Brien! Hi, Joel. With Andy Richter and the Max Weinberg Seven. Yeah, uh, great job, <laughs> as usual, Joel. We were just wondering, uh, are you feeling okay? Don't I seem okay? It's my goal to sound cheerful and pleasant, even as my heart drowns in drunken despair. <laughs> Joel, you, you shouldn't do that. You don't have to hide your pain from us. Yeah. How nice to hear, Conan. Since the last time I revealed the slightest hint of emotional fragility, I was laughed out of your office and openly mocked in the NBC newsletter. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Joel. It's trying to be funny. Uh, look, I'd like to make it up to you. You, you want to go see the new Star Wars movie with me? Ah, Star Wars. It seems like yesterday that the first Star Wars movie came out. It was 1977. I had just arrived in Los Angeles, hoping to make it as a movie star. As I hopped off the bus from Cedar Rapids, I was mugged at knife point by an elderly Vietnamese woman. <laughs> I offered no resistance and was still slashed severely across the neck, chin, and belly. Joel, that's, that's terrible. Your very first day? It was all downhill from there. Penniless and bleeding, I pawned my grandfather's compass from the Spanish-American War and spent the next four years at the Sunspot Motel, waking most mornings to the loud squeaking of mattresses and the crisp sound of gunfire. Well, what about your acting, Joel? Didn't you find any work? I had hoped that, like my idol, Alec Guinness, I would one day move gracefully between rich, vibrant film work and challenging parts on the stage. Instead, I settled for handing out car wash leaflets in a lobster suit and a non-speaking role as a pervert on Chico and the Man. Joel, that's uh, so sad. You, you, you didn't find any good roles? My most challenging role came about accidentally. Desperate for food money, I reluctantly agreed to deliver a package for a short, bald Israeli. It turned out to be three kilos of heroin. And when arrested by the feds, I was forced to wear a wire in an elaborate sting operation. Dropped on the outskirts of Fresno, I was compelled to buy smack from some bikers who went down in the sting, but not before finding my wire and shoving a dozen lit cigarettes into my gaping, screaming mouth. That's a horrible experience, Joel. But those guys are in, they're in jail now, right? Not anymore. They're out on parole and just sent me a dead rat as a warning. <laughs> Joel, listen, it's all going to be okay. Things just, they just have to get better from here. Nice sentiment, Conan. But my life is a septic tank filled to capacity with torment and anguish. And soon that foul tank shall explode, darkening the skies with cascading sheets of my soul's rancid excrement. <laughs> so, who's your favorite new Star Wars character? Darth Maul rules! Very nice. Yes, he does, Joel. We'll uh, take a break, and we'll be right back. Stick around. Why do we...